Hi friends and welcome back to Coffee with My Sunshine. Today I'm going to be doing four different DIYs using different paint techniques and textures. So to start you're going to need some sort of scrap board, canvas, Elmer's glue, and some foil or whatever kind of glue you want to use. <laughs> and you're just going to take a piece of foil that um, kind of overhangs the piece that you're using, the piece of wood or canvas or frame, whatever you're using. Doesn't matter if it ripped like mine, because you won't even notice, but you want to start scrunching the foil, kind of like we did with the faux leather um, paper bag technique, except you don't want to scrunch it as much as you did with the paper bag because the foil is really hard to get undone if it's in a ball without tearing it like crazy. So after you've got all the wrinkles like you want them, you're going to take your glue of choice and then spread it onto the board. You want a good amount because you want to make sure that the foil is really stuck on there really good. And I just did um, half to begin with so it was easier to lay down and get where I want it. And then I just put it, the rest of the glue down and covered the rest of the board. And here you want to really push down um, the flat pieces and just get it really stuck on there. Make sure all the glue bubbles are, are out of there. And also you want to want to glue down the edges. And to me, this actually looks really cool, just plain. <laughs> and you could do so many different paint techniques. I'm going to be doing like a... Um, faded kind of like an ombre effect i saw one of these um, type art pieces at ashley furniture actually and i thought it was really cool but go ahead and use any colors that match your style and any kind of design or anything that you want but like i said i'm just trying to mimic a piece of art that i saw at the furniture store so i'm starting with some black acrylic paint you could use watercolor and I just gave it a good coat. It wasn't even in any way. You can see the brush strokes and to me, this just looks so cool. I love the texture on here. And then after that first layer has dried, then I'm going to go on to the second layer. Oh yeah. After I paint the edges. <laughs> And I'm going to go from like darkest to lightest. So I'm going to use this dark purpley blue color. And like I said, this is so far out of my comfort zone with style. Like this would not match anything really in my house. I just thought the actual art piece that I saw was kind of cool. And I know they probably used paint for the texture or some sort of like putty stuff but I just wanted to try it with foil. So then I took the second uh, or third darkest color and blended it out. Well, I think next time if I do this, I'm going to add a little bit of water just to water it down and make it easier to spread on the um, foil. And each layer you want to dry before you go on to the next one. I mean, maybe not. Maybe if you wanted it to blend better, you would do it while it was wet, but I waited till mine was dry anyway. <laughs> And then I moved on to the next color. And then mixed a little bit of white with the lightest blue that I had. And then I'm just going to go with like this, just a regular white for the top. Yeah, I think probably next time I would add water just so it looks a little bit more blended. But you could do this with creams and browns and I think that would look so pretty. But I wanted to show you up close the different textures and colors. I think it looks really cool. Let me know what you guys think of this. I know it's a lot different than I normally do. I'm having fun playing with different textures and stuff. For this next one, you're going to need another scrap board or canvas, like I said, whatever you want to use, and your hot glue gun, and just start drawing designs. 
you could do like actual like pictures like you could do leaves you could make flowers you could do letters with your glue gun um, I'm just doing kind of like scribbly things like my husband said they look like worms <laughs> but I was just trying it out I thought it sounded really cool I was looking at pictures on Pinterest But you could use actual leaves too and um, with foil, kind of like we did when we were younger in school and just do like an imprint of the leaf or the flowers. So anyway, for this, I waited till the hot glue was nice and dry and pretty hard. And then I'm taking Elmer's glue and spreading out really good. And for this, because I want um, to make sure the pieces of foil are really pressed down around the... Um, you know, the little squiggly lines from the hot glue. I'm just doing small pieces of foil so it's easier to work with because I think if you did one big piece, you wouldn't be able to get it pressed down as well. So I just crumpled up the foil like I did last time and started pressing it down really well. And you can overlap it too, just make sure you um, put glue down um, on top of the other pieces of foil. And I found after doing this, I, I was about halfway done, <laughs> if you spray the top of the foil, your fingers move a lot easier on the foil to um, you know, spread out the glue underneath and also to press it down nice and firm. But don't do a lot of water because then your glue will never dry. <laughs> And these kind of reminded me of like those art pieces, you know, that you see that look really cool, but you're not totally sure what they're pictures of or what the design's supposed to be. So I, I kind of had fun with this one because it didn't really have to be anything. I just liked the texture. And then I just took some brown paint and used a sponge. You could use a brush if you didn't mind the brush strokes. And I just went over the whole thing. So let me know what kind of um, textures and stuff you guys have used or what kind of like DIY home, um, you know, art that you've done yourself and just different techniques and what you've done for your home. So then after that, I took a darker brown and just went around like the squiggly line so that it's going to give it like more depth when I put down a lighter color. And because some of the spots seemed kind of flat, I took some more foil and glued it down after I crumpled it in spots. And you can't even tell that they were extra pieces added on. And you could go ahead and like pile up the foil pretty high if you wanted, <laughs> if you wanted really crinkly and um, textured pieces. And then I just went over it with some more paint to kind of blend it in. And this is what it looks like. Some of the foil, um, the silver is poking through, but I was okay with that. But I think the texture looks awesome. It looks like little craters and leaves and stuff. <laughs> kind of like worms, like my husband said. <laughs> and then I took a white. I probably should have used like a cream color so it wasn't such a, like, I don't know, such a difference from the brown, but... That's okay. I was just playing around with it. I wanted the um, texture to kind of pop, so I'm just going over um, the squiggly lines and where the foil was kind of like bunched up. And this reminds me a lot of that one I was talking about earlier with the paper bag, the faux leather. I will link that video if you want to check that out too. And this is what it looks like all finished. I think it's kind of cool. Next time I want to do like an actual shape, like a leaf or a flower or something. For this next one, I am just taking leaves that I had taken off of some of my house plants. This one is probably my favorite because it has the most texture on the back and the back is what you're going to need for this project. And some sort of um, fabric. I'm just using this um, chunk of drop cloth that I had and then some paints. 
and a sponge. And you're going to, I just mixed my brown and black because I didn't want it just like stark black. <laughs> And I'm dipping the sponge in there. I don't want it like super goopy and thick because I want the texture of the leaf to show through. And then I'm just blotting it on the back of the leaf because that's where usually the most um, design and texture is. And then you take your fabric and flip the leaf over wherever you want and I am using a piece of paper over the top just so that I can kind of rub over it without like tearing the leaf and getting paint everywhere. <laughs> and different pressure that you use will give you obviously different results. This one I used pretty light pressure, but I think it still looks really awesome. I think this would be cool as you could do it as like a table runner or just artwork. You could do it on shirts or bags or whatever. I think it's like really cool. And you can keep using the same leaf. If it gets too full of paint, you can just rinse it off and start again. For the next one, I'm just, um, I'm going to be obviously using the same leaf and using a little bit more pressure so that I can get more of the design and it's going to be a little bit darker. I think that one's awesome too. You could also use um, flowers too if they're pretty flat. And here I'm just doing the rest of the leaves that I had. They weren't as textured so they didn't in my opinion turn out as cool as that one but I just wanted to show you what they look like in case these are the types of leaves you have. That one kind of turned out really cool too. <laughs> and after the paint has fully dried, like overnight, you can use your iron to seal in the paint. And I just kept going with that leaf because I loved it so much. I like how it turned out. So let me know what you guys think of this one too. Oh, and if you guys are interested, I just put up a Goodwill haul yesterday. Um, and I also asked if anybody could help me with ideas on how to flip or refresh the pieces. So I will have that linked down in the description box and in the comment section if you want to check that out and give me your ideas. And for this last one, I'm using this milk bottle. I just thought it was a really cool shape. And you guys know I love turning trash into treasure. <laughs> My challenge, I had to skip this month, but I will have the Using Trash to Create Treasure Challenge coming out in March. So for this next one, I am using more foil because it's fun to play with and just crinkling it like I did for the first project or first two projects. And then smoothing it out and I'm just going to attach it to the bottle just to make it so that it doesn't look like a milk bottle. <laughs> And I'm just using more Elmer's glue because that seems to work really well if you get it on there pretty good and um, really push down the foil. And then I'm just rolling the foil around the bottle. Really pushing really, really well along the way. Sorry if this is grossing anybody out using my fingers, but sometimes it just, it's easier to control with your fingers. <laughs> and 
And this, like like I said with the um, the artwork, you could paint this white and it would look so cool. You could use any colors that match your home, but I wanted to go with a little bit darker color. I think next time I might use some copper colors. I think that would look really pretty. Don't forget to glue down all the edges. And then I wanted to add some paint. So I'm using this black watercolor paint. And you wanna coat it pretty good so that it gets in all the little crevices because we're going to take a sock and, or whatever you have, like a rag, and rubbing it off so that in areas it looks almost faded. It's just like a really cool effect. I like that it um, lets the texture show through and makes it look kind of old. I just love that. I think it looks awesome. Sorry, I was trying to make it so that the lighting was right so you could actually see the texture. And then I just went the rest of the way around the bottle and kept doing that, rubbing the paint off. And then I used some brown just to make it look a little bit older and a little bit dirtier, I guess. <laughs> I didn't do a lot. I didn't want to go crazy with it because I actually liked how it looked with just the black. But I added that and then just did the same thing as I did with the black and rubbed it off with the sock and then added some twine around the top. It looks really vintage and cool, I think. guys that is it i hope you really enjoyed this if you're new here i would love for you to subscribe and join my youtube family always always leave me your video suggestions you know i love hearing them and just making videos that you guys want to see thank you so much for always coming back and supporting me and if you're new thanks for stopping in i would love for you to pop into the comments and say hi i hope you're all doing well take care and i'll see you next time bye